Good evening. And welcome. Welcome, welcome. Some of you have traveled from as far as Israel. So, and can you hear me? No, I'm not. I'm, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm. No? Now, can you? I'll turn it off. Okay, no, they, um, we're fine. And then I see so many wonderful, familiar faces in the audience, and I want to hug all of you. And of course, I'm, I, we're not going to carry on extensively this evening, but I want to set a bit of a tone before I tuck you off for the evening. Uh, This is a um, um, wonderful place to do a workshop. One of the reasons I like, a, I, I find a place like this so special, and it is special, is because we have each other's company for three days. That's a very wonderful thing, so we don't stray down the streets. We don't go anywhere shopping. We have each other, and we're going to take advantage of that. It's really something to put ourselves in a place where we incubate ideas and we incubate um, activity of the, of the soul. And with that in mind, I intend to make it an incubation time. Um, I'm going to be sharing some ideas that I am incubating on, and I haven't shared them before. So that for me is a very special thing because I'm working on a new book. It reminds me of when years and years and years ago, when I was living in Chicago, well, I still am living in Chicago, but this was before I went then to New Hampshire and then I came back. And when I was, a, I just got out of college. Was I still in college? You know, I'm getting to the place where I'm not sure how the timeline went, but it was way back then. And um, Lily Tomlin was doing a one-woman show in Chicago called the something about extra, in search of extraterrestrial intelligence or something. I don't know. Maybe some of you remember that show, All right? And while she was doing the one-woman show, what she would occasionally do is stop in to this comedy place and rehearse a new show she was doing because she needed an audience. And she did this one night. And honestly, she sat on a stool just like I'm doing, exactly like I'm doing. And she would go into her Tomlin routine because she needed an audience to tell the joke. And she would like go into character and start doing this joke. And then she'd say, no, 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 wait a minute. My timing's off there. All right, I'm going to do this again. I, I just looked at her. And so I have to make sure my timing's right because I'm incarnating original thought. And I'm, I'm looking for words. I'm searching for, I'm incarnating. I'm, I'm, for me, it's the most thrilling thing in the world. It's why I was born. It's why I was born. It's, when I come near this, I feel so electric. I feel as if I am disincarnating sometimes, as if I'm hovering over my desk, as if I begin to float, and as if I'm actually being taken away. And I am, I am dialoguing with a vision. And sometimes it, it's it can only happen for a second and then I tumble back into my body and I, 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 I have to find where's the right word and I'm shuffling, shuffling through the archive of data in my head and the right word. Will it fit into this word? And I remember what Teresa said, Teresa Vavila said, and when, when her nuns would say to her, where did you go? Where have you been? And she would say, my brain tried to go and they couldn't. And sometimes 
and I'm not comparing myself to Teresa Vavla, but I am saying that in the, in the, when you are experiencing trying to articulate what you yourself have not seen, Maybe for you, you'll say, oh, I've read this before, but I am in a new garden. And it is my deep belief personally that when I have come or stumbled across new gardens or have been shown new gardens, they're generally new gardens that I need to bring forth. To that, I will say this. We are living in one of the greatest, in the greatest turning point in human history the greatest turning point in human history, in human civilization. That is a mouthful, and I'm not using it poetically at all. There has never been a time in human history that has the elements to it that this time has. Never, never before, never. The ingredients that make up this time have never before come together. Never before have we been at the end of an age where, where first, first of all, we are standing at the end of being, thinking we are the only planet of life. We are at the beginning of joining a galactic community. That one thing alone is dismantling every single, every single religious theology on the planet. Every single one. Every single one. Because every one of them is based on the idea that God is Earth-centric. Born here and looks like us. Now every single one of those theologies will go to dust and be just the fairy tale that they have always been. And even now, as we sit here, in Rome, only Catholics refer to Rome and they mean the church. <laughs> but in Rome, in the Vatican, there's been a meeting going on for six years now with astrophysicists, and I'm going to be that in my next life, an astrophysicist. <laughs> so I can look at people and say, and what do you do? <laughs> but in the meantime, there's astrophysicists, biologists, theologians, astronomers, and they've gathered philosophers, atheists, although I'm not quite sure how one is a professional atheist. I, and then are you a retired atheist? I don't know what that is, but anyway, um, who are charting the first ga galactic theology. Galactic theology, because they know that as soon as the forces that be, governments, finally admit that there is extraterrestrial contact, that it reshuffles the nature of the game here. It reshuffles everything because you, what are you going to do? Say, does Andromeda have the, have the Georgian calendar, the Gregorian calendar? Do they have Christmas on it? Do they have a December? By the way, does Jesus love you over there? I mean, everything goes poof. Do they have an Abraham? Do they know about, well, Israel? Do they know about the 70 virgins? All of it goes poof. All of it. Which I find absolutely intriguing because simultaneously, the ending of the organizations is occurring in front of our eyes. Two popes reside in the Vatican. That itself is something, but 
to discuss it sometime, but it is the symbolic decline. It's like the end of the era. Um, so the, the Dalai Lama said he's not reincarnating. He's the last Dalai Lama. I'm not coming back. It's the end of the line. So it's the end of Catholicism, the end of the, the Buddhist line. I am longing to get to Magigori because the Madonna, who's appeared for 2,000 years, said this is the last time I'm coming to Earth. This is the end. And she said, uh, and she's been to Fatima, Lourdes, she leaves, she leaves fountains of healing, she leaves signs and miracles, and this time she says, I'm not coming anymore. I'm determined to get to Medjugorje, and I'm going later this year. And I'm taking whoever wants to come with, but I have got to get there. Because she's still appearing. And then it's the end. The closures are coming. The closures are coming. I don't say this to say, oh no, let's all sleep under our blankets tonight. It's not about that. It's about what does this mean for the challenges of our time? What does this mean? What are we being called to understand? How is it challenging us? <laughs> 